Welcome to Music History Monday for April 1st, 2024. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is Bob Dylan, Nobel Laureate. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. On April 1st, 2017, seven years ago today, Bob Dylan, born Robert Allen Zimmerman, 1941, was awarded his Nobel Prize in Literature in a private ceremony held at an undisclosed location in Stockholm, Sweden. At the ceremony, Dylan received his Gold Nobel Prize Medal and his Nobel Diploma. The cash prize of 8 million Swedish kroner, or $891,000 at the time, was not handed over to Dylan at the time, as he was required to give a lecture before receiving the cash. That lecture was recorded and then released some nine weeks later, on June 5, 2017. The private award ceremony was attended by 12 members of the Swedish Academy, that organization tasked with choosing the recipients of the Nobel Prize in Literature. According to Sarah Danius, the Academy's permanent secretary, a good time was had by all. Quote, spirits were high, champagne was had, unquote. Ms. Danius went on to describe the occasion in a bit more detail. Quote, quite a bit of time was spent looking closely at the gold medal, in particular the beautifully crafted back an image of a young man sitting under a laurel tree who listens to the muse. Taken from Virgil's Aeneid, the inscription reads, And they who bettered life on earth by their newly found mastery. We would observe that the announcement of Bob Dylan's Nobel Prize was made nearly six months before, on October 16th, 2016. Dylan, who was performing in Las Vegas, was immediately informed. However, in the days that followed, he failed to return any of the phone calls he received from the Swedish Academy. Neither did Dylan make any public comment or statement about the prize to the press. No one knew if he intended to attend the award ceremony in Stockholm on December 10th, where prize winners were to receive their awards from Swedish King Carl XVI himself, and where they were expected to give a speech. In reference to not hearing even a peep from Bob Dylan, a member of the Swedish Academy, the writer Per Vastberg, said on Swedish television, quote, this is an unprecedented situation, unquote. He then criticized Dylan as being, quote, impolite and arrogant, unquote. Yeah, we don't imagine Per Vostberg's opinion changing much when, after over a week, Dylan's people finally communicated with the Swedish Academy, informing them that he could not attend the award ceremony on December 10th due to previous commitments as if he'd been invited to play a round of golf. When Dylan finally did show up to accept his award on April 1st, 2017, seven years ago today, he honored those champagne-swilling Academy members by showing up in a hoodie under a leather jacket. And lest you think he ventured to Stockholm specifically to receive his prize, allow me to disabuse you of that notion. Rather, Stockholm was the first stop on a long-planned European concert tour, so a visit to the Swedish Academy was conveniently booked between the first and second concerts of the tour. The Nobel Prizes 
The Nobel Prizes were established by and named for the chemist, engineer, inventor, industrialist, and arms manufacturer Alfred Nobel, 1833 to 1896. The prizes were to be awarded to, quote, those who, during the preceding year, have conferred the greatest benefit to humankind, unquote. Since they were first awarded in 1901, the Nobel Prizes have been considered the most prestigious awards given in their disciplines. Originally, the prizes were given in five fields, physics, chemistry, physiology or medicine, literature, and peace. For our information, the Nobel Peace Prize is administered by the Norwegian Nobel Committee, a five-person team appointed by the Parliament of Norway. In 1969, a sixth Nobel Prize was added, this one for economics. Alfred Nobel amassed a huge fortune, built primarily on his 355 inventions. The most famous of these inventions was dynamite, which he patented in 1867. As for Nobel's prizes, it was, according to the story, though never verified, faulty journalism, alternative facts that had inspired Nobel to create his prizes. Here's the story. In 1888, Alfred Nobel was shocked to read his own obituary in a French newspaper. An obituary headlined, quote, the merchant of death is dead." Unquote. In fact, Nobel still had eight years to live. It was his older brother Ludwig who had died. Finding himself still among the living, Alfred began to consider his legacy. How would he be remembered after his death? Nobel came up with a plan, a plan about which he told no one except, we assume, the attorneys who helped him draw up his will. Nobel died on December 10, 1896. He was 63 years old. When his will was unsealed and read, jaws dropped and eyes opened wide across Europe. That's because Alfred Nobel had left a full 94% of his total assets. We're talking about some 31 million Swedish kroner, the equivalent today of $259,442,000 and change, to the creation of prizes that would be awarded to those who conferred, quote, the greatest benefit on mankind, unquote. The greatest benefit on mankind. Those are heady words. They are also subjective words. And among all of the Nobel Prizes awarded, I would suggest not one of them is more subjective than the one awarded for literature. Between 1901 and 2023, the Nobel Prize in Literature has been awarded to 120 different authors, including Rudyard Kipling, 1907, George Bernard Shaw, 1926, Thomas Mann, 1929, Sinclair Lewis, 1930, Eugene O'Neill, 1936, Pearl Buck, 1938, Hermann Hesse, 1946, William Faulkner, 1950, Winston Churchill, 1953, Ernest Hemingway, 1954, Boris Pasternak, 1958, John Steinbeck, 1962, Samuel Beckett, 1969, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, 1970, Saul Bellow, 1976, Isaac Bischeva Singer, 1978, William Golding, 1983, Toni Morrison, 1993, Gunter Grass, 1999, and Harold Pinter, 2005. Literary heavy hitters, 
every one of them. However, I am honor bound to point out that many of my favorite authors are not among the role of Nobel laureates. One has to be alive at the time the prize is awarded. So Cormac McCarthy, Philip Roth, John Le Carre, Milan Kundurna, John Barth, Joan Didion, and Tom Wolfe are all, sadly, now out of the running. As for living and therefore eligible authors, how about, for example, Joyce Carol Oates, Thomas Pynchon, Alice Walker, Salman Rushdie, Richard Russo, Michael Chabon, Dom DeLillo, Margaret Atwood, John Irving, Neil Stevenson, and yes, Stephen King? These are literary heavy hitters all as well. Feel free, please, to add your favorite living author slash poet to this decidedly brief list of deserving Nobel laureates. The point. The contemporary literary talent pool is inestimably deep, and there's no way every deserving author will ever receive this ultimate prize. But okay, we get it. Life isn't fair, and for every winner, there are always 101 equally qualified non-winners. Which brings us back to Bob Dylan, the first songwriter to ever receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. Did he deserve it? I myself am not going to opine as to whether Bob Dylan did or did not deserve a Nobel Prize for his song lyrics. That's a minefield I am not presently prepared to wander through. However, I will be happy to share with you the opinions of others, as Dylan's selection was indeed greeted with some controversy. Chief among those good people unhappy with Dylan's selection were professional authors, authors who believed, quote, that the literary merits of Dylan's work were not equal to those of more traditional authors, unquote. For example, the Jordanian-born American novelist Rabe Alamedin, born 1959, tweeted that, quote, Bob Dylan winning a Nobel in literature is like Mrs. Fields being awarded three Michelin stars, unquote. According to the French writer, Pierre Asseline, born 1953, the Swedish Academy's decision was, quote, contemptuous of writers, unquote. In an interview with the British daily, The Guardian, the Norwegian writer Carl Ove Knausgaard, born 1968, did his level best to take the high road, quote, I'm very divided. I love that the Nobel Committee opens up for other kinds of literature, lyrics, and so on. I think that's brilliant. But knowing that Dylan is the same generation as Thomas Pynchon, Philip Roth, and Cormac McCarthy makes it very difficult for me to accept it." Unquote. The British novelist Harry Kunzrew Born 1969, was frankly skeptical, commenting, quote, This feels like the lamest Nobel win since they gave it to Obama for not being Bush. Unquote. My personal favorite negative reaction came from the Scottish novelist Irvine Walsh, the author of Train Spotting, born 1958, who commented, Quote, I'm a Dylan fan, but this is an ill-conceived nostalgia award wrenched from the rancid prostates of senile gibbering hippies, unquote. by which we assume he is referring to the membership of the Swedish Academy. But for every negative reaction, there was a positive response to Dylan's Nobel Prize, particularly, not surprisingly, from among his fellow songwriters. For example, according to Bob Dylan's bud, 
Leonard Cohen, 1934 to 2016, who died just three weeks after Dylan's prize was announced. Bob Dylan required no prize to affirm his greatness. According to Cohen, quote, Dylan's Nobel is like pinning a medal on Mount Everest for being the highest mountain, unquote. Professor Seamus Perry, chair of the English faculty at Oxford University, compared Dylan to the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson and said that Dylan was, quote, representative and yet wholly individual, humane, angry, funny, and tender by turn, really wholly himself, one of the greats, unquote. As for the assertion by critics that Bob Dylan's lyrics were not literature, Joyce Carol Oates, born 1938, could not have disagreed more. In awarding a prize to Dylan, she praised the Swedish Academy for what she considered its, quote, inspired and original choice, unquote, and then went on to assert that, quote, Bob Dylan's haunting music and lyrics have always seemed, in the deepest sense, literary, unquote. Salman Rushdie, born 1947, told The Guardian that he was delighted with the prize, claiming that Dylan's lyrics had been, quote, an inspiration to me all my life, ever since I first heard a Dylan album at school. The frontiers of literature keep widening, and it's exciting the Nobel Prize recognizes that." Unquote. Finally, the former British poet laureate, Andrew Motion, born 1952, declared the prize to be, quote, a wonderful acknowledgement of Dylan's genius. For 50 and some years, he has bent, coaxed, teased, and persuaded words into lyric and narrative shapes that are at once extraordinary and inevitable, unquote. Back then, to Bob Dylan's apparent indifference to having won the prize and what that reaction may or may not really represent. Is this somebody's idea of a joke? On October 13th, 2016, the 2016 Nobel Prize in Literature was awarded to Bob Dylan, accompanied by the following citation. Quote, Bob Dylan's songs are rooted in the rich tradition of American folk music and are influenced by the poets of modernism and the beatnik movement. Early on, Dylan's lyrics incorporated social struggles and political protest. Love and religion are other important themes in his songs. His writing is often characterized by refined rhymes, and it paints surprising, sometimes surreal imagery. Since his debut in 1962, he has repeatedly reinvented his songs and music." Unquote. Following the announcement of Dylan's prize, the permanent secretary of the Swedish Academy, Sara Danius, said it had, quote, not been a difficult decision, unquote, and she hoped the Academy would not be criticized for its choice. Quote, we hoped the news would be received with joy, but you never know. We are giving it to Bob Dylan as a great poet. That's the reason we awarded him the prize. He's a great poet in the great English language tradition, stretching from Milton and Blake onwards. And he's a very interesting traditionalist, not just the written tradition, but also the oral one. Not just high literature, but also low literature. I think Bob Dylan deserves to be read as a poet." Unquote. Yeah, look, we should all receive such professional love and respect at some point of our careers, right? Yes, indeed. But it took Bob Dylan by surprise. Was his reticence to immediately respond to winning the Nobel Prize in Literature a product of arrogance and bad manners? 
Was his wearing a hoodie to his delayed award ceremony intended to be disrespectful? No, I don't think so. Here's what I think framed as a series of questions. What happens when someone who has prided himself on being an iconoclastic outsider his entire life, a wandering minstrel, someone free to criticize the establishment to his heart's content, what happens when such a person receives the greatest honor the establishment can bestow? Is it not in some ways <laughs> the worst thing that can happen? To be not just accepted, but honored by the very same elitist establishment Dylan had spent a significant portion of his life railing against? And then, after spending his career projecting the image of the itinerant, anti-capitalistic musical truth-teller, to take the Nobel Foundation's gold medal, their diploma, and their filthy blood-stained lucre, money originally generated through the arms and explosives industries? OMG! Receiving and accepting a Nobel Prize would seem, would seem to go against everything Bob Dylan had been about for 60 years and more. Any number of people went so far as to publicly declare that Dylan should, like Jean-Paul Sartre did in 1964, outright refuse to accept the Nobel for literature. For example, the English writer, journalist, and political commentator William Woodard Will Self, born 1961, went on the record writing, quote, Dylan is a great enough artist that his polymorphous talents include literary ones. The lyrics are amazing, although far better nasaled by the man himself than read on the page. My only caveat about the award is that it cheapens Dylan to be associated at all with a prize founded on an explosives and armaments fortune, and more often awarded to a Buggins whose turn it is than a world-class creative artist. Hopefully Bob will have the new British slang for common sense and intelligence to follow Sartre and refuse the award." Unquote. Yeah, we can only wonder whether Mr. Self, had he been granted a million dollar prize, would have had the new to refuse it. Somehow, I doubt it. With all of this swirling about, it's no wonder Bob Dylan was initially reluctant to acknowledge having received the prize. No wonder that he initially appeared ungrateful at having won the prize, and when he did accept it, why he did so quietly and privately, without any cameras or media to record the event for posterity. Bob Dylan has never been allergic to money, and there's no reason at all why he should be. But given the nature of his songs and his stage persona, many self-avowed idealists in his audience believe that a life of poverty is required to give Dylan the moral authority to sing the songs he sings. Please. In 2020, when the 79-year-old Bob Dylan sold his entire catalog of songs to the Universal Music Publishing Group for a sum reputed to be $300 million, the cries of sellout were so loud that if we listen carefully, we can still hear them today. I would respectfully suggest that unless one chooses to live in a cave and eat grubs and wear homespun, every one of us, if we've chosen to live in the real world and make a living using the tools nature has given us, is to some degree a sellout. Having said that, what is problematic about Bob Dylan is the degree to which he has parlayed his fame into being a celebrity spokesperson for the very corporate interests he spent the first two-thirds of his career railing against. In tomorrow's Dr. Bob Prescribes post, we will examine and watch 
the most egregious examples of Dylan's profiteering. His television commercials made starting in 2004. But for now, our conclusion. Back, please, to Bob Dylan and his Nobel Prize. In the end, an appropriately humbled Dylan did indeed write an acceptance speech and give his required Nobel lecture. The lecture was released as a recording. A link is to be found at the post. In his speech, Dylan wrote the following, quote, I am honored to be receiving such a prestigious prize. Being awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature is something I never could have imagined or seen coming. If someone had ever told me that I had the slightest chance of winning the Nobel Prize, I would have to think that I'd have about the same odds as standing on the moon. Not once have I ever had the time to ask myself, are my songs literature? So I do thank the Swedish Academy both for taking the time to consider that very question and ultimately for providing such a wonderful answer." Unquote. That's very nice. Thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com.